And as we kick off the final week of September, stocks falling across all three major indices on track for the worst month of the year. Here to discuss further is Rob Hayworth, Senior Investment Strategy Director at U.S. Bank Asset Management Group. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, in general, September is back to school, but it, it tends to be the worst month of the year, and we're seeing that play out so far. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, September has been tough, and it's uh, really all to the Fed. Uh, we've seen uh, markets have done very well uh, to start the year, and, and as the Fed has really put through its higher for longer mandate, we've, had, we've seen markets have to catch up, and that's both the bond market and the stock market catch up to that concept. With 10-year Treasury yields moving higher, that's put uh, uh, interest rate sensitive securities under pressure, and investors have kind of retrenched on what have been the strongest performers for the year uh, in, the, uh, in the tech stocks and the secular growth names. Uh, and so the market's kind of been on sale, to your point earlier, about kind of in a risk-off mode as we've seen a stronger dollar higher rates uh, and it, it's tough to compete with that. Yeah, and you if you look at some of the risk factors that are out there, uh, Rob, they feel like they're rising, right? You now have an auto workers strike. You have a potential government shutdown looming and there's been a lot of talk about how much that could carve out of GDP growth. Um, you have the uh, student loan repayment that is starting up again on, on uh, Sunday. And then you also have oil prices, <laughs> that's just to throw another one in there, that have been elevated. With all of these factors, are stocks going to be able to, you know, begin a rally again? Yeah, and and kind of the challenge with all that is is you have a lot of uncertainty, and particularly with the government shutdown, we'll get more uncertainty, or assuming the government shuts down, more uncertainty because we won't get a lot of the economic data we've gotten used to that we've been relying on to think about what is the Federal Reserve going to do in the future? How are they going to react? Uh, because they very much need to see that data on inflation and earnings, and that kind of means we won't get a lot of information until we start seeing third quarter earnings uh, Friday, uh, October 13th with the with the money center banks. So uh, it'll put us a, a bit in an information, uh, a dark information period where we just won't be getting enough information to to think about what the forward environment is. So that I think that's good. That'll take some sentiment out of the market. Um, uh, but that said, right, there's we've retrenched it to a level where uh, things could also get better. This is a, an economy where the consumer has been extremely resilient. And yes, we're going to see student loan repayments start, but the, the expectation is it's modest. We're seeing pay increases, which tend to hurt corporate margins, but that helps the consumer, helps them uh, have staying power, even though oil prices are a little bit higher at 90, around $90 a barrel, um, but certainly something they can weather when they're seeing uh, average hourly earnings grow in that 4.3% range. So uh, there's some, some, you know, this appears kind of like a muddle through economy where uh, things could get a little worse, but there seems to be enough staying power in that consumer and even in earnings expectations coming from Wall Street for the economy to, to kind of muddle the way it's, its way through and the market to find some footing eventually as we get through some of these uncertainties.